In impoverished communities like all days in Limpopo, drop-in centers are a lifeline for vulnerable children. They're offered a meal and a place of safety, and for a little while at least, these children can be children again. So when a wealthy benefactor offered to build a fully operational center for their care, it was a dream come true for the community. Or was it? Here's Masa. I've been here in Africa for 25 years. One day I went to the high school and met the headmaster and he said that they're going to close drop-in center and the 160 children is there and they are going to be thrown out, almost die on the street, you know. No one is going to take care of them. So then I said, let me try to do something for those kids. This is Polina Manengena's life. Every week, Monday to Friday, she comes here to her corrugated iron kitchen to cook for the children of all days. Polina manages the Dirshanang Drop-In Center, a registered MPO with the Limpopo Provincial Department of Social Development. It is essentially a community-driven aftercare service in all days in northern Limpopo, giving vulnerable children a safe place to go after school, offering homework assistance and food. For many, this is the only meal of the day. About a decade ago, Polena and the children's lives were supposed to change drastically when this wealthy Swedish businessman, Leif Ramquist, arrived with promises. Ramquist negotiated with the local municipality to construct a building for the drop-in center on municipal land. This so-called orphanage is supposed to accommodate these children over here. Except many of these children aren't actually orphans. And they haven't even seen the inside of this building. A decade after this building was constructed, the kids are still outside in the hot Limbopo sun. Steven Saragalala is the community elected chair of the Dirshanang Drop-in Center. What's in this building? It's a nice uh, kitchen with nice kitchen unit. Everything is nice inside. Everything is nice, right for the kids. The original management plan approved by the Bloberg local municipality estimated that around 15 million rand would be spent and the facility would include a clinic, education and training facilities and a soccer field. Who is Leif Ramquist? Well, he's a Swedish businessman who purchased a string of farms in northern Limpopo in 1995. And while here, he documented his time in Africa in this book, Mapungubwe, the place of the stone of wisdom. Here's a little extract. 60 years ago, in his native Stockholm, a young Leif Ramquist visited his suburban local theater where he watched his first Tarzan movie. This movie inspired him to one day visit the Dark Continent. 
From the start, Ramquist was actively raising funds for this project. His Europe-based company, Ramquist International, listed the orphanage as one of its flagship CSI projects. Social media posts with Nordic bank accounts were asking for donations. At that stage, Mr. Ramquist already told everybody that he's got a lot of money from donors that were ready for this project. Eugene Small is a professional hunter and was working for Ramquist overseeing the construction of the so-called orphanage in all days. <laughs> you know, Mr. Ramquist is a good businessman, very good. You know, so his whole idea was everybody must help. People in the community, contractors and stuff that was here, everybody had to pay 6.5% of the, you know, the, the, the invoices. Uh, even the professional hunters that worked here, you know, they were deducted 6.5% from the payment. No one is sure exactly how much was donated or where the monies ended up. But emails between Ramquist and donors point to sizable amounts flowing in from abroad, all supposedly to help these children. At the end of 2014, a container filled with donated goods from Sweden arrived at Durban Harbour. We were having a meeting at the municipality with his lawyer. He said there is a, a luggage for the kids that needs us to, 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 to form a board and constitution at the same time. A non-profit company needed to be registered to clear the donations with customs. Eight board members were appointed to manage this NPC called the Mapungubwe Foundation. Leif Ramquist, his lawyer, Hani Avia, two members of the Bloberg local municipality, two local community members representing social services, and Stephen and Bolina. <laughs> The Dirshanang drop-in center was now tied to Ramquist and he wanted to be in control. Legal services manager at the Bloberg local municipality, Mike Maguela, is also a board member of the Mapungubwe Foundation. We were just duchies because uh, we didn't take any any decision in a conglomerated fashion. We found that decisions were taken uh, maybe by Ranquist, together maybe uh, uh, with Ervia, but I should believe that it's a, a, a leaf in particular. Ramquist even demanded veto rights as a member of the Mapungubwe Foundation board. I think Mr. Ramquist wasn't going to let anybody share his idea, share his, his running of this place. So there were quite a lot of conflict from the early meetings. I remember in one previous meeting where in Leaf just uh, banged the door and went out because we said we wanted to see financial statement and then we said, no, I'll also want to see financial statement of Dirishama. Are you telling me that this man displayed such arrogance towards this community and the local municipality did nothing but watched? No, the, the local municipality, actually to, to, for, with your first question, yes, he displays arrogance. But the municipality did almost everything in its power to make it a point that it brings them to the table. By 2015, the relationship between the drop-in center and Ramquist was crumbling. Ramquist appointed Sarki Mateke as orphanage mother, which meant that two different charities were operating from the same municipal property, Ramquist's orphanage inside the newly constructed building and the Dirishanang drop-in center in a corrugated iron shack along the fence of the property. 
manager of the Bloberg Municipality Satellite Office in all days, Franz Mpading, stepped in during our interview with Maguela to help explain the situation. The thing is, some of the things were like hearsay up until we realized that this thing is real. Because we went there and then uh, Mananyana took us along uh, throughout the building and we could see that really they are not utilizing that very building. Despite the issues, Ramquist has over the years brought many international guests to visit his orphanage. Every year with my four Tanaka was to dinner. At Luchagore, Merco idea, and I want to be a little bit of a little bit of a little bit. Lea never knows a little bit of a little bit of a Friday. Would Lima Quamanciana a Friday? Saturday by Nava Batua by an aqua plastic. While we were filming in all days, Ramquist was treating his guests to his extravagant 80th birthday celebrations. The community alleges that when guests visit, children are enticed to spend an hour or two at the orphanage to sing and pose for pictures, all to impress would-be donors. This guy, he gets lot of millions, a lot of millions using our kids. And at the end, our kids get, get nothing. Ramquist responded in writing via his lawyer, Henny Arvia. He denies all allegations and says the drop-in center children are welcome at his facility. Both Arvia and Ramquist emphatically deny benefiting financially from any donations received for the orphanage all of which can be accounted for. And they offered this video from the birthday celebrations, presumably as proof that Ramquist is supporting the community. Happy birthday, Father. And I thank God for giving us a father like you. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And we thank you for the, for the home you've given. Mm. Behind the girl giving the birthday wishes is orphanage mother, Sarki Mateke. She claims she's currently taking care of 19 children in the so-called orphanage. According to Ramquist and Arvia, all allegations against them are part of a smear campaign by former employee Eugene Small. Ramquist says he is suing Small for 30 million rand, which Small owes him. But Eugene maintains it's a matter of principle. The main thing is people go out there, they gloat about what they do. They write articles in magazines about what they do and how great they are. And the children are, are supposed to benefit from the beginning, from, from 2014 that they're supposed to benefit, eat on the ground. Ramquist and Avia add that no children are deliberately sourced to mislead donors. And all donations received have been spent on running the orphanage and other initiatives via a different NPC, the Ramquist Foundation. They claim the community members of the Mapungubwe Foundation Board were eager to gain control of funds and ignored their attempts to convene board meetings. What are you going to do to make sure that those kids this winter are not inside that shack? Uh, like Makwela has just said, to say the matter is with the ox. What was left now was for the council to take a decision on whether to uh, tell him to move out in terms of a document. Isn't that a no-brainer that he should move out? You know, in, in a case, as you are dealing with the case, you can't just abruptly say, not today, you must go. It's not abrupt. I'm saying this thing has been going on since yes. 2015, 14. That's a long time ago. So. The, the, those were not cases. There were issues that we were discussing, we were trying to resolve. Had it been nipped in the bud then, do you think we'd be sitting in this unless, position where you now have to get a council meeting just un, to get rid of this man? Unless you realize that something really fishy is happening. It's you really know? fishy. We no, spent two really days. It's really fishy now because we can all agree. That's why we are saying we took the matter to the Hawks. The Hawks have confirmed that they are investigating the case but could not give us any further information. And while board members are fighting and sending letters, pointing fingers at each other, the children of the Dushanang Drop-In Center are grateful for the little that they have.
and Bolena and Stephen continue to fight for them. Uh, my wish is to die this problem being solved. If I can die this problem not being solved, I think I can be a ghost. <laughs> Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.